What's up, everybody? Episode 25, live wrap-up. Headline is Matt wins again, 349 trading platform wins again. Why? Because we knew exactly what was going to go on the market. You know how I love to give summaries and wrap-ups on the market. So on Sunday, I tweeted out to my platform and I showed them a picture. And I showed them a pattern because this is what I do. I see volume. I see demand. But I recognize patterns. I recognize patterns all the time. Real quick, I used to play blackjack professionally. I did it for eight months. I won 88% of my sessions. Why? Because I see patterns. I see patterns in numbers. So what was the pattern I saw? Okay, let's take it back to May 13th. First of all, I do this live. There's no, I make an outline, but everything's from memory. May 13th, right? One outflow day in tech, one red day in tech, followed by two green days, all right? So Thursday the 13th, red. Friday, Monday, green, right? The next day, red. The following, which was Wednesday, uh, then we had, uh, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, inflow, green in tech. Then we had Friday, which was, you know, right before the weekend, red, outflow in tech. What did I tell everybody over the weekend? I shot this video uh Friday, I shot it again on Sunday, and I said, we're going to have a tech glorious day today, and we did. Man, tech was strong today, and the Dow was strong, which I also said would be more likely go off the coattails and they ride together. And what it was the best position we we're all in? Best position? Yes, you over there. UVXY, we said was going down. Matt said it was going down under 420. Boom, this morning, 419. What happened? It went lower, 409. What happened? I think it went to 404. Yes, I did say I was expecting 398 today. I'm greedy. What can I do? I'm trying to share with you. And also, we spoke about different stocks and positions and what the platform was doing. So new people, here it is, okay? Real slow. We like to call the direction of the market. I've been on fire for five weeks. Five weeks straight, 349 platform, on fire. Um, if you want to join the platform, it should be at the bottom of the screen, but it isn't. 349trading.com. Uh, um, you can join the platform. It's $3.49 a week. I don't charge an arm and leg. You know why I don't charge an arm and leg? Because I know what I'm doing is right. Everything we're doing is organic. We're growing organically. We have new members every day. No one's leaving. It's amazing. I mean, one person leaves here, one person leaves there. I can't help that shit. Oops, excuse my language. Point is, we're growing organically. Everything I'm doing is right. We don't lock people in longer than a week. You want to stay a week and leave? Great thing. On my platform, on my website, I have rules, lessons to make you a better trader. And most of you are saying, dude, he isn't talking to me. I's not. I'm talking exactly to you. Some of you are on my platform. New people, if you just found my video today for the first time, yes, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'd like to make you a better trader. And yes, I'm talking to you. And I don't care if you have three months or a year experience. It doesn't matter. Let's get back to the pattern. So I saw the pattern in tech. I told you it was going to be strong. I told you the Dow was going to be strong. I told you what, we might not even have a sell-off this morning. Who knows? I don't know if we did. Do we have a much of a sell-off? Not much. Oh, we did have that morning dip where we planned ahead. Okay, let's talk about certain positions. Um, by the way, please pay this forward, share this broadcast, share my Twitter. Um, everything I do is organic. We don't pay for marketing. And again, platforms growing, family is growing. I do this with each and every one of you. You guys help each other. That's great. I give you the theory. I give you an entry point. You guys get in better. And we'll talk about that real quick, but let's see what we got. Um, okay, today, pre-market, we did that video. Then with UVXY, I sold two positions in UVXY today that I announced I was selling. I could have got more money. Why? Because it went down even further. I got 101% and 79%. Anybody that was holding UVXY with me. Yeah, we did kind of crazy good. SQQQ, it went down exactly at 1256. Was it yesterday on Friday? I tweeted and I said, this is going down. I'm surprised it's not going down by the end of the day. And I think it actually went up to like 1184. Where did it go today? To 1111. And it was trying to go under $11. That's coming. Why? Because tomorrow we're going to see green in tech. I told you the pattern. One red day, two green. One red day, two green. The pattern works until it doesn't work anymore. So tomorrow, my prediction, NASDAQ green. So please don't ask me what I think is going to happen tomorrow. I think we're going to see more of what we saw today until told otherwise, until there's a major event in the world that changes people's minds or the 10 year spikes or there's a problem with oil or something like that to make me think otherwise. Now, I don't think it's going up continuously. It's two green days, then a red, two green days and a red. Tomorrow should be green. OK, what else are we kicking in? Oh, and NOX. Yes, there's a short in the market. And I hate that my stock looks like it's going to rebound. Same with Plug looked like it was going to rebound. They took it away. Neo looks strong. They took like 40 cents at the end of the day. Um, Carnival, CCL, I notified you guys. Look, 
Um, volume is spiking. What happened the next minute? Boom, it spiked even harder. Another 20 cents. I said, look at it again. Boom, it spiked another 20 cents. So Carnival, definitely some interest. Somebody was heavy getting into there. Just like I like Delta. I like Las Vegas Sands Casino. These are all Dow plays. Okay, he doesn't speak of AMC that much. Yes, AMC looks strong. I heard there's a billionaire in China that's making a huge bet in AMC, uh, in AMC stock. So yeah, those Chinese have a lot of money. They have a lot of friends. If it's true, it could put AMC to $20. So anybody that's there with call options, I would be holding on. Anybody that wants to enter AMC, like a dip this morning. I bought a few contracts. I took a chance. Um, I bought $15 strike price. Yeah, I know the stock's under 15 and I always preach about must be in the money or at the money. Yes, it's AMC. It's totally potluck. I don't like to gamble. You know that. So when I talk about something, it's always less risk, most reward. Less risk, most reward. I talk about planning, okay? Pre-market, if I tell you that there's going to be a dip at every morning, every morning you watch the market, it dips hard, rebounds hard, and dips hard again. They don't know which direction it's going in. The point is, if you're looking to sell something, you plan ahead for max value. When it spikes, you get max value. Figure that out ahead of time. Watch my options video, option video number three, 14, episode 17, and I dropped an options video on Sunday. Um, what else is strong? eBay is strong. I gave an alert today, and I'm going to drop some slides on you guys. I don't want to talk for very long. I'm going to ask you guys uh, to do five things for me, okay? Five things. Subscribe. Push the notification. Watch my other videos. Episode 3, 14, 8, 17, 21, 22. This is 25, but you don't have to rewatch this one because you're watching live. Okay, watch my live stream. It's pretty darn good every day, and I share with you what I'm seeing. We're going to show you some slides to help educate you and show you lessons that I help teach. And then I'm gonna answer questions, positions that you guys are in stocks that you wanna know about, or where's this going, or why isn't this going well, or what should I do? Should I get out? Somebody showed me positions today and I asked them, I said, you should probably just step out of shit. Yes, that's one of my lessons. When you're stuck in shit, you step out of shit. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. Oh, and follow the rules, everybody. Follow the rules. If you're asking me about averaging down and I speak about averaging down, here we go. Rule about options, okay? You're in an option position, it sucks. It's down 40 or 50%. You want to average down, okay? If you bought one contract, you're going to buy two contracts, okay? Or if you spend $1,000, you're going to spend another 1000 But your option expires this Friday, all right? You're stuck in a position, it's down 40%, 50%, expires this Friday. How do you average down? You go out three months. You go out four months. You spend that same $1,000, okay? So say your option position expires, and you're down 40%, you need to sell, okay? You're gonna make it up on the option position out in June, September, October, whatever it is. Don't throw good money after bad, okay? Other people say, no, you support your position. You do this, you do that. There are smart ways to do it. If your option expires June 4th, then you're okay to average down. You're down 40%. You, you like the position, you like the stock, like me. I like uh, Coinbase. That's not the one I have till June 4th. I have NN and OX. So what did I do this morning? I bought more options. Why? Because I'm supporting my position. I think I paid a dollar ninety, and that's what they ended the day at a dollar ninety, which sucks. I want to make profit. Um, I thought about Roblox, man. That thing keeps going up. It's almost at my sell point. I'm just gonna sell when it gets there. Ninety-two dollar price target on Roblox. I'm gonna talk about a couple stocks. I think. Um, let me just see if I had anything else to talk about to you guys. I really just want to answer some questions today and get this going. Okay, so let's just look at uh, my watch list real quick. I'm going to talk about a couple stocks. I love when you guys share photos with me when I'm doing my live stream. Okay, NNOX, it was beaten up. It was definitely shorted. People try and get ahead. So what happens to your stock if you see a violent move? Say it's recovering very nice in a U curve or even a V-shaped recovery. We all know what that is, okay? What happens? It just, if there's no volume, it's volatile. It'll just go down. You're like, damn, all my freaking gains right there. Why? Because people like to get ahead of the curve. People love to call it first. Oh, that's the peak. I'm selling. Oh, that's the bottom. I'm buying. I call the bottoms. I'm wrong. 10-minute rule. After I call the bottom, it always goes down. 10 minutes later, you guys get a better price. Um, tops, I'm pretty good at calling the peaks. But that's what it is. That's why no one's buying. And when you see it happen first, because I can tell you sometimes during the day, I'm like, oh, this is about to sell off. I hope it doesn't, but it's about to. And then what happens five minutes later? It sells off. So when I share things with you guys about volume, about demand, about what
what I'm seeing in the market. I'm giving you like the 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 insight. It's about to happen. It's about to pop. If I think something's going to pop, there's usually a percent tied to it, 20% chance, 50% chance. Sometimes they tell you 80% chance. On Friday, I said 90% chance the NASDAQ would finish higher on the day. And I was so surprised when it went down 50 points. But what happens? I was just early. It happened today. I showed you how strong the NASDAQ was and it fit the pattern. There was more selling on Friday and today and tomorrow it should go up. Okay, let's go to my slides real quick. I'm going to share some stuff. Maybe I had some other lessons, but I'm losing my voice. Okay. Mm. Obviously, I put these in the wrong order. But I mentioned Carnival is going to pop. It went to 20. Okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's Carnival. So I mentioned I saw some volume picking up. I saw some demands. I thought something good. So please pay attention to it. 2770. That was after a pop. Now, we all were in Carnival anyway because we like that as a Dow recovery play. Carnival is going to start selling. What do you think is going to happen? The stock should be $35, $42 by end of summer. It's going in the right direction. So long-term Carnival calls are a very safe position. You're new to options. What is he talking about? You pick an option in Carnival stock. You go out till September. You pick a strike place like $30, and you probably pay 3 or $4 for that. Now, when Carnival hits $45 or $50 by then, your option is worth four or five times the money. So $300 becomes $1,500. $500 will become $2,000. $2,000 will become $8,000, okay? It's a smart way to invest. And you're saying, okay, great, Matt, but options are dangerous. I'm not very good at this stuff. You go out, you buy a call, all right? You look at your expiration date, September or October. You pick a strike price like $30, which gives you the option to buy the stock at 30. Now we never execute options. We always are in there just to leverage our position. So we don't have to spend $20,000 on stock. We can spend $1,000 on option and make a good return. All right, next, next slide, please. So I pointed out the volume there. You can see what happened right after I pointed it out. The stock went another 2% higher. I said, if it was strong towards the end of the day, you might even see like $28.40. I don't think it got that high. And I think it drew back at the end of the day, maybe another 20 cents. Point was, when you see volume, stocks spike, okay? When you see demand pick up and you see it 10 over one, meaning maybe they traded half a million shares that last five minutes, but this five minutes, they just traded 5 million shares. That's a significant spike, okay, in demand. Next slide, please. I might, might be a couple like this. All right, snapshot. Here's a lesson, okay? Anybody that follows me understands this. I look at the market at 10.45 a.m. I look at the market at 11.10 a.m. In that span, in that 25-minute span, if tech goes up, if the Dow goes up, that's how I base the rest of the day, okay? Anything happens from 11.11 all the way to 2 p.m., it's BS. It doesn't matter to me. I know the final score. So that's what I'm trying to teach you guys. Understand the market. If you know the final score of the game, you don't really care how your team won 21 to 6. All right. You don't care it was tied 6 6 the whole game and they scored in the last two minutes or something to that extent. You just need to know how the score is going to end. When I say UVX is going down, that's exactly what I mean. Next slide, please. And I give you guys entry points and targets. Okay. Tesla. I now own Tesla. Eight wins. Two losses against Tesla. You know what happened? I sold for like a 35% gain. I could have got like 80% today or 75%. Tesla's dangerous. I'm an idiot, but I'm human. I'm transparent. When I sell something, I share with my followers. I don't want to leave any bag holders. That's why I'm here also. Most of this, uh, Ask Matt, is to get you guys out of positions or to answer questions about positions that you're in, that you found yourself or that you're struggling or how do I average down or I have no money and I have stock and options. What do I do? You can ask all these questions. I have theories and ways to get you out of that. I mentioned a sports bet over this weekend and I entered the same way. It was a live game and I bet 25% of my bet and then I added 25% of my bet. I won both positions. Okay. Same as stock. It's a theory. You use that. Anybody who wants to reach out on me on the side, I'll share my theories with you. Next slide, please. Mm. 420. I love that number. Oh, UVXY. Yeah, I was just showing you guys this morning. It breached 420 like I said it would. And don't be surprised. It's going down hard. Okay. What's that mean? It means the market is stable. Volatility in the market is stable. It doesn't mean the market has to be green. It happens to be that people are buying less puts and less volatile um, indicators in the market. That's what controls volatility and the news and the events and things like that. So this ended up again, I think it was like 408 to end the day, which is significant. It's another 3% since I gave this alert that it just dropped and it would continue to drop. Next slide, please. Anyway, my return, 101%. Oh, power. Whoop. Let's go back one, please. Um, there's just some power stocks. I don't know, maybe we skipped one. All right, next, 
Next one, I guess. All right, digital turbine. I pointed out this heavy selling during the day. Again, private app members, private Twitter account. I pointed this out. I said, heavy selling. Somebody cleared out a position, maybe two people. When I say somebody, I mean institutions, okay? I see these things. This is how they sell. They don't want to drop it. They want to start feeding the market with their stock to get out of the position. And once it's going down, now they just shove the rest of their stock out there. And that's what we saw. So what did I do? I bought some options. Of course, I alerted. If you got some options, you know what happened 10 minutes after this? Next slide. I think it went down more. Um, but I bought some options. Nope. Let's go on to another slide. I'll skip this one. Those are just powerhouse stocks that I alerted. Um, nope. We did that one already. Let's go on to the next one, please. Okay. Apps. Again, let's go on to the next one. That's the stock. A-P-P-S. Okay. Yeah. So you can see it right there. No, you went past it. Okay. There you go. That's fine. We can leave that one. Okay. So you'll see there was my alert, the first highlight. And you'll see about 15 minutes later, guess what? It dropped even harder. You guys got better entries. And again, I'm just showing you live here. It was 62.76. It actually crossed $63 and like 40 cents. So the positive direction, the sentiment was there. Now this company reports, I believe on May 25th, they keep beating earnings each time by probably like 15 or 20%. They don't crush earnings. Earnings are like 11 cents and they come out and they beat it with 15 cents or 15 cents is the estimate and they come out and they beat it with 20 cents. But the market likes that. And if tech is strong, this stock could explode. And I say explode when I'm talking about it could be mid 70s. And yes, we're at $62 right here or 63. So that's like a 15, 20, 25 percent gain. Anything's possible. Next slide, please. These are just things that I'm trying to educate you guys and share with you what I'm seeing so that you see the same thing. OK, we're done with slides. How awesome is that? Again, Pay this forward, share this broadcast because I'm about to help you guys out. I'm about to get to just your questions to help you out of positions. Um, everything we do is organic. I don't spend any money on marketing. I don't tag these things. I don't do this, do that. My platform is what we do. $349 a week. Why do I charge $349 a week and not like these other gurus who charge $100 or more for the month and lock you into like six months or a year or something like that? Why do I only charge $349 a week? Anybody? Yes, I will answer this question for you because I know the shit that I put together and the content I provide and what I'm providing you and what I'm showing you is like priceless. All right. So for three forty nine, it's a no brainer. So I want to make you guys like I'm Netflix and this is a no brainer. You need to understand the market. You need to see what I'm seeing now. Why? Because you're trading with real money. These are hard earned paychecks. These are hard earned savings that you have. The pandemic brought you to me. I came to you from the pandemic. I never did this pre-pandemic. I'm not a social media guru and I'm not a guru and I'm not a stock analyst and I'm a smart guy who sees patterns and I see 30 million traders who are struggling and being taken advantage of by these institutions. And real quick, before I get to help, I'll tell you a real quick story, okay? I work for these institutions. I work for a hedge fund out of high school because I'm a math freaking prodigy, okay? After college, I was going to be a SOS trader, short order execution system, right? They outlawed it because it was illegal. It was a way to rip off investors. You would steal an eighth of a point or a sixteenth of a point executing trades for other people. They outlawed it. I was going to make a fortune. Then I worked for a couple of different banks. I calculated their trade uh, executions on their desk. Then I worked for another hedge fund in Connecticut. The point is, I manipulated stocks, okay? So when you see NNOX, and I tell you, it's about to be manipulated and it drops off a face, man, they're only doing this with a couple hundred thousand shares with like $4 million. I used to have $10 million to play with, okay? It didn't matter what stock I was going to manipulate. So when I tell you there's demand, that's a very good thing. When I see the demand, and it doesn't mean I'm seeing volume and the stock's up 90%, because what did I tell you about that stock that went to 90 the other day? I said sell because it ends up at 50. And then you have that Brooklyn Therapeutics Company, BTX, right? You guys were like, should we hop in? Should we get in? And I'm like, no, it's going back to 60. It's probably going back to 20. And you know what it's at? I think it's at like $13. And what did they say on the message boards? The BTX message boards. I don't post it there, but what do they say? They're like, dude, we're going to hit 15 today. 15, are you kidding me? These people are in BTX at 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. I mean, it goes on and on. It's making me crazy. And they're hoping to hit 15. If you're getting crushed and you're off like 80%, do you care if your stock's going to move 1%? You don't. You want to get your money back. So here's what you do. You watch my episode 14. I talk about if you're down in stocks, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. I talk about the safe way to go into options, episode 14. All right. Thank you so much. Watch my stuff. Subscribe. That's you're going to pay me back. Hit the thumbs up because I don't charge a lot. It's ridiculous. My shit is priceless. Okay. I'm not conceited. I'm here to help.
But if you guys don't get it, you don't pay it forward. Some people do. Some people sign up their friends like, hey, sign up their parents. It's crazy how quickly we're growing. We've only been doing this five weeks, okay? We have over 4,000 YouTube hours. You guys are crazy. Um, we have like a 1,000 members. I don't know why some members don't sign up for private Twitter because you're missing the alerts. With that said, let's get to some questions. Any questions are good, okay? You can ask specific questions about stocks you want to get into or you're thinking about or you're thinking about a specific options play. I might not say like, okay, let me analyze that options play, but I'll tell you, yes, the date is correct. Yes, you're in the money as long as you get the best price. And you'll say, what do you mean I get the best price? Well, we plan ahead. We plan for the stock to go on 3%. So the option price will probably go down 30%. Meaning instead of buying a $3 option, you're going to pay $2.10. It's going to go down 30%. You plan ahead. It's so much better getting into an options play. When you get in, it's $3 to start the day. You get in at $2.10 and it ends the day at $3, $3 again because you're up. 30% instead of being down 3% or 4% and worried about the next day. I'm in an options play where I picked the wrong time and I'm like, I just feel screwed. I don't have that cushion. I had a cushion. I don't. All right, Matt, you rock. When to buy UVX calls. All right. First question, UVX calls. You only buy UVX calls when you think volatility is going to spike. So me, as long as the markets are strong and we are in a bullish market, which I've been saying now for two weeks, we had a quick correction, 4%. We're in a bullish market until it corrects again, and it will. Maybe Wednesday. Who knows? Tomorrow's Tuesday. I think tomorrow's going up. Anyway, I don't buy UVX calls. Why? They're a waste of money. Watch and read the message boards. These people talk. It's the same people every day. Oh, I can't wait till it pops today. Oh, it's going to go up today. Oh, they're recounting the president's vote. Oh, COVID's doing this. Oh, we're having an outbreak. It doesn't matter. It doesn't push the market. You saw a massive sell-off. UVXY went to spike to like six. Where is it today? Close to $4. So again, the smart move is to buy the puts. Every time it spikes, you buy the puts. And will Neo put work for this week? Why would you say that? I'm talking about I like Neo. Neo finally looks strong. And I tweeted today how strong the Neo chart was. And this was when it was like just across $35. And $35.50 was a key target that it had to pierce. And it did. Then it went 36. And I was actually thinking to myself, it would be impossible for it to get 37. And it did. It went back to 36, 35, like 80. Or, as long as it finished above. 35.50. I would not buy puts. I am sick of swimming against the tide. Like salmon, right? They swim upstream. It's so much easier to ride momentum. Somebody looked at my watch list today when I tweeted it out and they said, oh my God, DDD is still moving. Yes, it goes up like 4% every day. And until it doesn't go up 4%, it's probably going to go up 4% tomorrow. History repeats itself. Yes, Matt's favorite saying, if I beat you in a race and we're running and we're sprinting, I'm going to beat you tomorrow. If a horse is racing against another horse and it beats it, it's going to beat it next time. Same with Olympic swimmers. Same with baseball teams. The Dodgers are on a crazy streak. Tampa Bay is like one nine in a row. What's going to happen? They're probably going to win until they lose. I would keep betting it. Same with Oakland. They had a team. They won like 12 in a row, 13 in a row. After they went four in a row, it's free money. Fifth game. Then you're free rolling the sixth game. Seventh. That's all it is. Stop being a contrarian when it comes to certain things. I love to be a contrarian. I think the opposite is going to happen. But I don't swim against the stream, meaning Neo looks good. Delta looks good. Carnival looks good. I wouldn't bet against those. All right. I did something not stupid, but I think I called the bottom on Coinbase. I expect Coinbase to turn around and turn around somewhat substantially. I think crypto is going to go off the charts this week. You've seen it in Riot and Mara. And that was my stupidity. You know what? If I'm talking about Bitcoin rebounding and holding true, I actually thought Coinbase would explode like Mara or Riot today. I thought it was going to move 13%. So I'm an idiot. I could have called 13%, 14%, got in cheap this morning. I bet those two stocks were negative at some point today, and yet they made 13 14%. I called Coinbase. Why? Because all these people are coming out saying Coinbase price target, uh, 300, 275, 295. Yes, and I know that millennials like to push stuff. Coinbase is expensive. I expect the institutions to push it as well, but it's not happening. Okay, sorry to get sidetracked. So, no, I wouldn't do either one of these. I would do the opposite of both, which is probably why I trade at 90%, and I'm not insulting you, but let's work on your trading. Also, here's why I'm here. I want to work on your trading. I want to make you better at trading. I don't care what it is that I can help you with. Ask this question. I'm here to help. No stupid questions, all right? There are definitely stupid answers that I give, but no stupid questions. Next question, please. Matt. Should I do if I can't average Dorn on uh, NNOX? My average is $1.13 each. So I'm going to assume you have the same ones that I have that are probably worth about $0.65, cents, which I think are the calls that expire this Friday. Um, if you can't average down, do you have any other money? Okay, so if your 100% of your account is in these options or this one option play, you're too risky, okay? If you have 
money, you just have, don't have money on the side, then the only way to average down is you have to sell a stock. Why? Because options expire this Friday. Your stock is good forever. So I'm not saying you own NNOX stock. I'm saying whatever stock you own that you're profitable in, okay? I like to make sure my stocks are profitable. So whatever it is, you're finding whatever you bought NNOX, say you have like four contracts and your average is that, you paid like $500 or 450. Find yourself $500, buy two contracts out a week, two weeks, three weeks, use that $500, okay? And that's how you average down. Now, plan ahead for a spike. So NNOX, you'll watch the market. If it's green tomorrow, you'll try and get a dollar out of it or a dollar 10 or a dollar 15. At the same point, you're planning ahead for it to go down when you're buying your September options. Instead of paying $2 or $1.90, whatever I paid for my thing, you're going to try and pay $1.80. That way, if it goes down, you're prepared. And if it goes up, you're prepared. You have two strategies. One to sell your current position when it bounces back up and one to average down should it drop. Now, hopefully you understand that. Now, again, if you don't have money, you have to sell a stock. If you have to wait for the money to settle because your platform doesn't let you trade right away, then I'm sorry. Then that's what your chance you're going to have to do. Or there might not be a way to average down and you might just have to try and get out. Again, if you have to wait two days, you sell a stock on Tuesday and you can't buy options till Thursday. Guess what? You probably don't want to average down on Thursday because whatever happens Tuesday and Wednesday, that's probably going to be already it. So you're either going to make your money back or you're going to struggle to save something and you'll decide what your stop loss is, maybe 50 cents and you'll be down 55% on the trade, or it'll bounce back and you'll lose 10%, or it'll bounce back and you'll make 22%, all right? Um, again, averaging down, you go out a couple more weeks. Next question, please. All right, you bought NNOX. June 8th calls on the dip. Yes, plan ahead. Do I think that's a good options play? I don't think your options expire June 8th. They probably expire either June 18th or June 4th, because I bought some of each of those. I bought June 4th and June 8th. Uh, you did not enter the original play, but I saw it dipped. Yeah, so that's cool. Exactly. We're looking for the dip. We're looking for a stock. Anybody that doesn't understand entry point, okay? You're real simple. Simplify it. We're looking for a stock to drop 2%. We're looking for the options price, whatever options it is. And I don't care what stock you are, what expiration, whatever it is, what you're paying. If you're paying a dollar, look for it to drop 15 or 20%. Meaning, if the bid is a dollar currently, Put in your bid at 85 cents or 80 cents. If the bid is currently $5 or 500 per contract, put in your bid at $420 per contract, okay? 420. Why? Because you're going to save 20%. Who's going to call in the bottom? Nobody is. Whenever I buy an option contract, as soon as it's going up, like this morning, Coinbase, right? I'm like, look, plan ahead. Boom. I'm up 7%. Then I'm up 11%. Then I went from being up 11% to down 11%. And I think I ended the day at down like 15%. That sucks. I thought I was stealing a Coinbase option and I'm down 15% on it on the day. So the point is, there's always a better dip. You're never going to be late. Don't have FOMO. Don't pay too much. Don't scare sell. Okay. If you have an option and it's worth a dollar, like Carnival, I almost sold my Carnival for a dollar today and then it went down to 80 cents. And I'm like, oh, should I sell for 80 cents? No, I don't want to give up 20%. Why would I give up 20 hard earned percent? I should have planned ahead. I should have sold that option for a dollar. I could have re-entered at 80 cents. That was my fault, not planning ahead. Remember what this morning's video was? Pre-market for app members, okay? Private Twitter, pre-market, plan ahead. How many times did I say it? 10, 15 times. It's all about the platform. It's all about learning to trade. It's planning ahead. You execute trades without screen watching. You execute trades with having to focus on the trade or following the stock. Yo, Joe, it's up 10 cents, down 10 cents. What's going on? Is my stock going crazy? I'm losing my mind. No, you put in the trade, you take a walk. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If you got the best price, great. Make sure you're comfortable with the price, the entry point. There's a lesson on that on my platform. Okay, so you bought 11 days out. Yeah, I think that's a good position. I like it. 11 days out, plenty of time. There is a short. As soon as the short gets wiped out, I mentioned this today. There were 3,000 shares. They were fighting with each other. The, the uh, bulls were winning. And then all of a sudden, the shorts like called reinforcements in and the stock plummeted. All right, next question. You bought four on $590 calls, right? And we know the stock is like $620 or $30 right now. They're expiring uh, 917 before of the four for one split. How high do I think it could run? Okay, so remember when Tesla split and it went higher. So 
Jim Cramer got on about this. He's like, I'm not sure why NVIDIA is up 3% today. They announced a split. That doesn't mean the stock's worth more. He is correct about that. It's the only thing he's correct about. It doesn't mean the market won't push it higher. NVIDIA is best in class. So, yeah, I think this stock went to, I'm just going to give you a little help right here. We'll do a little math real quick. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, here we go. All right, it's 620, 624, 626 after hours, but let's go with 624 because that's an easy number to split in four. Okay, so they're going to split it in four. 624, so 600 split in four is $150. 24 split in four is $6, okay? So it's going to be $156 per, per share of stock. You're going to have, you know, four shares of stock if you have stock. If you have options, what is going to happen, right? So all that's going to happen is your option price will go down. Um, they'll split it in four. So whatever 590 is split in four, which is uh, what 250 is 147.50. That'll be your strike price. So that's how you figure out your new strike price when they do the split, unless you sell sooner. Again, it's okay to sell whatever position it is. When I tell you guys it's okay to take profit, like I did today at like 245, I was like the market might throw off at the end of the day. I didn't say that, but I said it's okay to take profit. It's okay to take profit. You'll buy tomorrow morning's tip. Always have a strategy, okay? The reason I tweeted over the weekend on Sunday is because I was thinking of my strategy for the week going forward. And what better thing? Why would I keep it to myself? I went. So I'm here to share with you my strategy. So when I saw the pattern on different stocks on Sunday, I tweeted it and I said, Monday will be strong. Why do I do that? It's not to lie to you. It's not to guess. It's not to predict. I tell you it with conviction so you're not scared. So if something you know, spikes down first thing in the morning, instead of selling, you're looking to buy. And so many of you showed me today and you did awesome. My members are rock stars. You guys are so smart. It's like you go from kindergarten to like 12th grade. Some of you are even in AP classes. I love this shit. Okay, next question, please. It could run. It can run good. It's best in class. It gets aligned with AMD, which is like a chip manufacturer. Oh, by the way, just so you guys know, I don't get paid for doing YouTube. So what am I going to do besides for having water? I have a cigarette every now while I'm answering some questions. You, I'm sorry. It's not for kids. If you like, you know, if you have kids, don't let them watch. Bought 300. I'm going to look this one up. By the way, when I say that, I never get to because I always have to look stuff up and answer questions. And I don't want to shortchange anybody. So V, C, and X. Okay, let's read the question real quick. Um, oh, it's a NASDAQ stock. It's a very small stock with no volume. Okay, VCNX, Vaxinex. I don't know what they do, but their volume today was 169,000. Anybody that knows volume, if it's under millions and it's too cheap, it's like $2, it means you can control or manipulate the stock. So I'll look at the one month. All right, so you have a little buying going on yesterday and some small selling today. There must have been news yesterday, but until you have more news, what's probably going to happen is this stock will probably bleed a little. 2% here, 3% here, 2% here until you have more news. Once you have more news, it'll probably pop again. But you got in at $6.30 and everybody knows it's $2 and a quarter now. What should you do to exit the position? Um, wow, I'm sorry. Even if it pops, it looks like it would pop to like $2.50, which isn't so great. It would be like 10%. And that still isn't going to make you back to this position. Unlike when I talk about in episode 14, getting out of shitty stocks that you're down 66% and making them back in options, it won't work for this stock because there's no volatility in this stock. There's no volume. There's no demand. And it looks like a poopy stock. So you'd just be throwing more money out. So yes, please step out of shit. Remember the example. Step out of shit, whatever you have left, which is $675 and you entered in with like $1,900, okay? So you're down $1,300. Keep a mental note. You don't like to lose money. How could you not have been selling this even when it hit 260, 250, 240? You should have sold this. Look for a spike. It was at uh, as high as 234 today. So if I'm going to put it in order to sell tomorrow, I'm going to sell at $2.33. Assuming it doesn't go back to where it was today, it'll get pretty darn close. So that would be my order. I would at least make $0.09 cents back, which in this case is a, what, a few percent, I guess. Yeah, nine cents would be what three and a half percent. So yeah, make the three and a half percent back. Don't give it all away. Don't be down seventy percent. Be down sixty-three percent or sixty-two and a half percent. Exit out. Bad to step and shit. Next question, please. Told you. Thoughts on root? Yeah, unfortunately, root is still so heavily shorted, and I'm still waiting for someone to step in. But you know what? It's going to be on root. It's going to be a catalyst. So if you're in root, and this is me being transparent, okay? I have two positions in root. Um, they're both losing. They're probably down like 15 or 18 or 20 percent right now. Just stock. And I probably have, what, 100 shares, 200 shares. So it's a few hundred dollars. Um, 
but it looks like crap. Root looks like crap. The, the volume is shitty. The demand is shitty. It's one of the most shorted stocks out there. So, yes, even though it's going to stay on my spreadsheet, I will still own the stock. Just like when Mauro was going down, I didn't sell it. Even though I said Mauro was going down, I'm holding it because long term, I know it's going to be a good stock. But if you're in this and it's tying up 30 percent of your portfolio, say you have a thousand dollars worth of this, a thousand of something else and a thousand of something else, you could step out of shit. Get out of this thousand dollar position. I told somebody today, they showed me Ebon, they showed me something else and SOS. And I told them, it's okay. These stocks might move. However, you're down so much, it's better to take that $1,200, put it on the side, find a 100% return position like the UVXY, the SQQQ, anything we spoke about, the SDOW, right? The TQQQ, it made it over 102 today, right? Remember our June 18 calls at 100? What do you think is going to happen? If the market's strong, it'll be like those will be worth like $15. We paid five or some of us paid $4. That's a three to 400% return. That's why we haven't sold yet. So it's okay to step out. You can get out of root. It's okay. Um, what would you try and do? I'd probably try and get like $9.10 tomorrow morning at some point, And hopefully it hits that maybe 920. Unfortunately, there's just no volume. If somebody steps in and says, we're going to screw the shorts, right? like a Reddit or somebody. It doesn't have to be a Reddit. It has to be a, just a normal investor. They could easily do it. They would need five or six million dollars. It wouldn't even take a lot. But until that happens, it's, you know, unfortunately, I would get out. Next question, please. Ah, oh, thank goodness. A stock that I understand. DDD. So it's funny because I spoke about this stock earlier in the broadcast. I mentioned DDD and I mentioned that it goes up every freaking day. 3%, 4%, 3%. It was under $20. Let's pull it up. It's at $27, uh, $28 almost. It's up 77 cents today, which isn't crazy, but it's up just under 3%. So yeah, it did better than the NASDAQ as a whole. It's a 3D demand uh, printing company, right? Which we know is the future. And 3D printing is helping in airline parts, medical parts, things like that. I remember why I don't smoke now because I never have a chance because I don't shut up. Um, so yeah, could it pass 30? It easily could pass 30. There has to be volume. It had volume of 7 million, which is good for it. Okay. However, if it has a volume day of $15 million, then it's going north of 30. So you heard it here first, DDD, when you see it north of 30 and it's going to spike one day. And yes, I think it is going there. That's why I'm talking about it because the day that it spikes, I want everybody that's watching this video right now to think back, DDD, add it to your watch list. When it spikes on the day, you're going to see the volume at $15 million and the stock will be past $30. And if it passes 30 on its own, by the time it spikes, it might go to 32 or 33. Now somebody showed me call options at $34 strike. Why? It's never been higher than like $27, $28 in the last couple of weeks. So why would you buy that? You wouldn't. You buy in the money or at the money. Those are my lessons. In or at the money, you buy yourself extra time. I can't yell. I have a virus. I'm on an antibiotic a steroid, an eye drop with a cortisone and a steroid and an antibiotic in it. And then they gave me an inhaler. So I don't know why they gave me an inhaler. Albuterol, whatever. All right, next question, please. I'm real with you guys. Oh, can we talk Yvonne? Still swinging this, hoping for a squeeze. Yes, exactly. Every time I get 20 cents, like it pops free market or it's more expensive, like it's a higher price than I think it should be. I scalp it. I sell my shares. And I buy it back at some point when I see it bottoming. So when you see it bottom and then it spikes, that's probably me. No, it's probably a lot of people. But yes, I'm talking about 50,000 shares each time that I do that. So it's a pretty significant spike. Um, I will continue to do so. However, people talk about this. When Coinbase starts recovering, which I strongly think it's going to do. Okay. I hope I'm not early on it. And I hope it recovers soon. And when I say recover, I say like 20% recovery real quick like 10% one day, 8%, then 6% that it gives back to somewhere in between. So Yvonne, just be careful. Don't go into options. People love to show me Yvonne options. You're being, getting beat up with a stick. There's one stock that has your number, okay? This is a lesson for everybody. If you're in one stock and it beats you every time, like I kill Blink every time. I'm seven and seven versus Blink or nine and two versus Tesla. If there was a stock that I was like 0 and three against, guess what? I'm going to give up. I'm going to stop challenging that stock because I'm no good at it. So if you're losing money and there's one stock that has your number and look at your PNL, whatever platform you're on, if there's one or two stocks that just have your number, but they keep drawing you back in, you're like, oh, Dra uh, DraftKings, oh, GameStop, I need to go back. If they keep beating you, even AMC, if I'm telling you AMC is going to go higher, but AMC has your number and you're down 10,000 or 12,000, guess what? 
just give up on that stock. All right, the next question, please. No, no more questions. Uh, are calls safer than puts than for beginners? No, the only thing you have to know about your calls or your puts, or if you're a beginner is, you have to be the one thing. Okay, now I speak about options. I dropped the video on Sunday. Please just subscribe and you know uh, push notifications. So options for beginners, right? Here's what you wanna do. Options help you lever, okay? So you have $1,200 in your account, okay? If you were to buy a $12 stock, you could buy 100 shares, okay? The stock goes up to 15, you make $300. So your $1,200, you're all in, which means you can't follow my rules about investing 25%. If you invest 25, you'd make like 75 bucks if you're right about the stock. Okay, so that's stock, okay? You have $1,200, you buy the stock, at 12, it goes to 15. You made $75 if you follow the rules, if you broke the rules and you went all in with your stock, you made $300. Now options, okay? You pick an option, your $12 stock right now, you go out till September. You say, I'll take the September calls. In the money means the option is like $10, $11, or $12. It means it's right at the price of the option, okay? You go out till September, okay? You pay whatever they're asking, $3, let's say, okay? $3, that's pretty expensive, but you're being safe. So you have $1,200, so you buy four contracts. All right, spend your $1,200. Now the option goes up, or the price of the stock goes from 12 to 15. Your option's at 15, so you have an option to buy at 15, but you have all that time. So it goes up, it makes your option, which is $3, now worth 450. So your $1,200 is now worth $1,800. And it's safer because you have till September. So options for beginners is fine. You guys are doing a great job. You guys wanna go over, um, let's go over two more lessons for everybody real quick, and then we'll get just a couple more questions. Because I found my lessons that I had for everybody. So real quick, offerings, okay? We've spoken about offerings before. If anybody is new and doesn't understand offerings, and we're not going to go into heavy detail, just here, when your stock, your company says, we're doing an offering, it sucks. Even when it's private placement, it sucks because they're going to cheapen the value of your stock. They're going to take away, they're going to depreciate the value. An offering dilutes your stock, okay? Your stock, your company has a million shares and they offer a million shares. Your stock price should go in half. Now, people say, oh, but the offering is at $4. The stock's not going to go below $4. Guess what happens when you do offerings? The stock goes below the offering price, right? That Castor Marine, where's that stock? 30 cents, Sundial, 70 cents, 80 cents. I mean, I tell you guys these. Um, EF, VM, or whatever that, ephemeren, whatever it's called, 80 something cents, right? The offering was for a dollar. It goes under that 17%. And when you're playing with penny stocks, in this case, when I'm talking about these, some of these offerings, right? 17 cents is a lot of money. If you had Castor Marine at 51 cents and it's worth 34 cents right now, that's 33% of your portfolio. So I don't care if you're like $9,000 and you know what it is? You just lost three grand. That's a sh lot of money, okay? Exactly, a lot of money. Okay, sale. This is what I mean by entry point. You're looking for something on sale. I've told this story many times. You go to a store, you're buying a dress, a suit, a jacket, whatever it is, a baseball glove for your kid, flowers for the holiday for your wife, ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. If the person who's selling you these things, you're spending $200, tells you, so same price as an option, right? If you're selling, if you're buying something that's worth $200, the salesperson says to you, guess what? It's on sale tomorrow or it's on sale on Wednesday. It's going to be $160, 20% off. You have to think about entering into positions like that. So you like a stock, you want to sell. If you're doing a stock, you look at the range that it trades in. Okay, If it goes, trades in a range of 3 to 4%, then you say tomorrow, when I buy this stock, I'm going to look for it to dip 3%. When I buy the option tomorrow, I'm going to take the mid price that it closed at today, and I'm going to subtract 30% and get a bargain. We're always looking for a bargain. Same way when we sell something, we plan ahead. So you have an option or you have whatever it is, stock, and you say, I want it to go up 5% today. If it goes up 5%, my option is going to go up 50%. I paid $200. I'm going to ask the price of $300. You don't care what happens to the stock. You just want to make your profit. All right, so that's real quick. Um, I'm going to go over our some stocks on my watch list. Oh, we have more questions. Okay. Cliff options expire. CLF expires Friday 21st. Yes, this Friday. Your call average is 28 cents and it's currently at 7 cents. Okay. So what you can do for Cliff or any materials play that you might get stuck in. Cliff, uh, Mosaic, um, 
uh, FCX, uh, Fremont, uh, New, Newman, New Mining, what is it, MEM, um, Newmont Mining, um, anything you're stuck in, you don't want to average down the wrong way. So say you had five options and your average was uh, 28 cents, you paid $140, right? Take the $140, buy yourself one $140 option. Yeah, stop with the out of the money stuff, okay? That's why you only paid 28 cents because it was likely to be worthless. That's why it's worth seven cents with four days left because it's likely to be worthless. Unfortunately, it's likely to be worthless. But you put in, let's say $140, take the $140, go out to June 18th and buy yourself one CLF option. So what's gonna happen is when you lose $140 on this trade, by the time June 18th rolls around, your $140 option will be worth $280 or more, all right? You're giving yourself the time for the stock to turn around. Unfortunately, your timing was wrong here. The Dow is strong, but only certain Dow stocks are strong. I'm sure Boeing is strong if we look at that, if anybody has a question. I'm sorry, all right, next question, please. Let's kill off some questions. How do I find trackers? It really depends what kind of market day it was. Today, I gave my example for two trackers. <clears throat> I saw two stocks that were beating up. So one of them was Tiger, T-I-G-R, which meshes well with Futu, F-U-T-U. So they moved together. So Futu was up one and a half percent or one percent, and Tiger was slacking and off half a percent. So I use them as trackers, and I said, if I'm right about the strength of the market and it recovers through three o'clock to the end of the day, Tiger will be positive. Well, guess what? I think Tiger was off probably two and a half percent. The market gave back at the end of the day. Now, why is that a good thing? Okay, because I said the market was going to be strong tomorrow. So if you're looking at the curve of tech, it goes up, it peaks, and there's a sell-off. There's profit taking. That's good because if it goes tomorrow, there'll be a little sell-off and then a higher mountain. It's always higher highs and higher lows. Okay, higher lows, meaning it hits a higher low point each time. It's like steps. I talk about steps. So I find a tracker based on whatever I think the market's interested in that day. Like today, since Bitcoin was so crazy and crypto was crazy over the weekend, I picked a Coinbase that I thought was going to explode as one stock. But any type of trackers like that or crypto stocks, Riot, Mara, um, anything related to crypto plays, that was what I was looking at today. Fintech, Square made a huge move today. Did anybody see the volume in Square? SQ, it was sitting at 205, 206 all day, which was up 3%. And then it spiked up to $212. Yes, there was action. There was volume. That's what happens. You can look at it. SQ. All right. Next question, please. Uh, NNO Ox. Okay. You bought it. Six, six, how can you average down? Okay. So please watch my uh, video. I think it's 14, episode 14. It might be episode 17, but I'm pretty sure it's 14 because my memory works like that. So you're down. The stock is $23. So let's just say you bought it 69. You're basically down 65%. Okay. So you're down 65%. Um, let's say you didn't have a ton of shares. Let's say you had $1,000 worth, okay? $1,000 worth, you're down $650, meaning if you sell tomorrow, you will have $350. You take that $350, you buy one or two option contracts to out to September. Why? Because when this stock pops, and when I say it pops, this stock's going north of 40, north of 60. By the end of the year, if they deliver their goods, they'll be up in like the 70, 80, 90 dollar range. They're huge institutional buying. Their float's not so huge. They have great cash flow on hand. So what are we doing? Okay, you're selling at a peak tomorrow, or you could have sold today, or you could have sold on Friday. I mean, the stock was $25 pre-market. Now we're talking about $23. So that's two dollars. It's probably like two hundred dollars. Makes a huge difference. Um, anyway. So I don't want to get on to you about that. But what do you do? You sell your stock when it peaks. You watch my video, episode 14, 17, after we're done today. And I'm telling you, you take the remaining money, the $350 left from the $1,000 you put into that position. You buy one or two options out a few weeks to a few months when the stock rebounds. And instead of being down 66%, you'll make your 66% back and you'll be back to even, which will seem like such a victory. And you all know what it's like to be down something going, oh man, if I could just leave, break even with what I came or what I started with, I'd be so much happier. And you don't realize that you wasted weeks, months, you stressed out your life, your hair is turning gray, you have uh, stomach issues, whatever it is. So when I talk to you guys, and the one thing that I wanna share the most is we trade without emotion. We trade with math, 349 trading platform. We plan ahead, we follow the rules, and we follow math. 
That's what makes us so damn good. And if you're new here and you don't follow my platform and you're saying all this dude talks about his winners every single episode, blah, blah, blah. Yes, because we crush it. I'm crushing it like 74% for my option plays. Actually, 75% or 76 because I closed out two more positions today that were both green, 101% and 79%. Yes, crushing it. I got in on CCL spike off Matt's tweet. I used the money from a play I was down on, and it helped me get back 20% of my losses. You're still down on the money, but it was better than watching. Yes, so when you're down on something, every day you don't see the volume, and you see the outflow greater than inflow, and you're losing 2%, 3%, 2%, 3%. Guess what? A week later, someone showed me, asked me about a stock, and I looked at it, and I was like, this looks like the worst stock I've ever seen because all you do is give away Five cents, 10 cents, 20 cents a day, but it adds up and it makes your position. And I'm sure you feel like crap because it's got to be depressing. It'd be like being on a sports team and losing every single game. Yes, losing two to one. You might only lose a few cents, but losing sucks. Always step out of shit. Give yourself a chance to make money. Follow the rules. Any free option play for tomorrow. No, I don't give my stuff in advance anymore because it's stupid. I once gave like something in advance and it dropped like 20% in two days where I said I was going to wait two days, but people were like, give me, give me an alert on Monday. I want my alerts to be 100% profitable. So I will talk about other stocks. I'll talk about things that I see. But if I say alert, 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 it's going to be profitable. How do we know that? My spreadsheet tells you that. It's been up since March 1st and my spreadsheet, my option plays alone sound like or 75 percent and i sound like one of those guys like hey bet on this team i don't lose i'm the best yeah it's truthful i share all my plays you guys get in better and yes 75 percent. and a lot of my plays return 200 percent, 300 percent, 79 percent, 36 percent. it doesn't matter if you make 40 percent in a day you're golden if you do that on your own i should follow your platform i'll pay you i'll take your information i'll give it to my people tiger earnings fell tomorrow Never got green today. Any predictions? I know there are bears against Tiger, but Futu gave earnings and they crushed it. I bought a few Tiger options today and it was making a comeback and then it gave it all back. So I'm actually down like 4%, 3.87% actually. But yeah, I'm holding my Tiger options. Not a lot. I bought six contracts. It was worth a chance. I think Tiger's strong, but someone's holding it back. It could be it's okay. Just understand this. When you buy calls and there are a lot of you with Tiger calls, right? When you're buying the call, Who's selling them to you? Institutions. They're writing covered calls, which means they own the stock. So what can they do if they want to keep your price under the strike price? They can sell it and force the stock down. They have a lot of stock. It's like Fort Knox. Oh, we need 10,000 more shares. Here you go. Force it down. Here you go. Now, what could help? Good earnings can help and a strong NASDAQ tomorrow. So that's what I'd be counting on. And if they do well, you can see the stock spike from what? $17.5, I guess to, I'm assuming that's what it is. Maybe it's $17, probably all the way to like $19, $19, 12 cents. Bitcoin sucks. What did I tell you guys on Friday and over the weekend? I'm looking at Bitcoin sucks. Why? Because Bitcoin, I found the bottom on Sunday. I said, Bitcoin was 34,000. I said, if we wake up Monday morning and Bitcoin's 37,000, it's going to be a positive day and I will be right about the market. And that's your key indicator. And what happened this morning, Bitcoin was like 37.5, maybe it's 38 now. Bitcoin stocks are appreciating. Um, they tweeted out, Elon Musk tweeted out something and somebody responded that we're looking to cut the energy that Bitcoin uses. Now understand this about Bitcoin, okay? The best Bitcoin stock is MSTR. They don't, they, all they do is buy Bitcoin, all right? Why is it the best stock? They don't produce Bitcoin. Why is it the best stock? Here you go. 18 and a half million Bitcoin has already been farmed, is already out there in the public floating in cyberspace. Only two and a half million dollars or two and a half million coins are left to farm. So it's supply and demand. There's no freaking supply. 21 million coins. That's it. Now, what MSTR has is they're like Fort Knox of Bitcoin. So even though I like uh, Riot and Mara and they should benefit off this, but people aren't thinking. It's like the guy that did the big short. Dr. Michael Drury or Brewery, whatever his name is. The thing is, these Bitcoin stocks and the, the equipment makers and things like that, they're going to run out of things to farm because there's only so much Bitcoin left. What are you going to do with all these machines? They'll probably have to tell them to some other cryptocurrency. But I like MSDR. They're going to be a good runner. And if you get in, you can do some leap arrows. Okay, Dolphin. I meant to get in on the scalp. I saw a big volume intraday spike and buy. I am now bag holding. Yeah, unfortunately... It's an NFT play. NFT companies do not have real value. So I'm in Dolphin with two positions, stock only. So I have maybe like 2,000 shares. Um, I'm probably down $2,000. I haven't changed my position. 
Now, NFT plays, light volume stocks, that one, TCAT, um, Zkin, right? Until they show that they can have earnings and a good revenue model, it's going to be tough. However, if you want to get into an NFT play, you could buy eBay. eBay is so strong. So Dolphin, you thought I'd be scalp. I've done that before. I got caught with two, two positions of Blink, okay? Blink, who I hate and who I crush every time I play options against Blink. I have 200 shares of Blink that suck. They suck. They suck. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what to tell you. I'd probably exit out and find something better. Next question. I mean, I have this stock, but... Okay, do I believe this is a long question? Carnival, plug, tiger will go up. Do I know which stock institutions will buy or do I just believe in these companies? Okay, plug, I believe in the company because Biden will be passing the green uh, energy initiative and they will skyrocket and it's all about infrastructure. And that's why Blink will probably move to and charge point. But until it's on the table and they're voting on it and it's going to get passed, um, these stocks will struggle. Now, remember, plug got beat into 20 and then went to like 27. So it made a huge 30% move. I mean, that's 30%, 35%. Um, Carnival also beat it down. It went to 30 or 29 too fast, and then they beat it down to 25. And now it's at what, like $28? That's a huge move, okay? It's slow and steady. That's why I talk about September options. Tiger, again, I just spoke about this. Earnings tomorrow, that'll tell. If they miss earnings, Tiger might go down to $14. Actually, probably $12. If Tiger misses earnings or tells them something terrible, tomorrow tiger will lose 30 percent of its value okay if they tell them something good it'll go up 20 percent. i mean like to, like wow hey our numbers are off the chart blah 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 it's a very volatile play i like it i took six contracts as i mentioned next question please <clears throat> ebang so ebang is what e, uh not e ebon ebon is ebang right we already spoke about that one right ebang holy yeah so I already spoke about scalping that one. What do I think? It's probably worth double or even more what it is. It's similar to Coinbase. One Coinbase flips around uh, any type of trading platform like the Ebonox trading platform that they have, which as soon as they come out and they say, we have this many customers trading this size account. Again, they don't invest in crypto. And these guys, I think they also make some machines and things like that. Then they also mine Dogecoin, which was worthless at four cents. Now it's 33 cents. What if they actually, you know, uh, you could buy things with Dogecoin like Mavericks tickets and use it at Maverick City. And, and there's another company that's you use Dogecoin. And Elon said, hey, maybe Dogecoin for Tesla. The point is, once their uses, these things go up. Uh, EVs will continue moving. You got into CCIV stock only last week, but took calls for around the release of their new vehicles. Okay, unfortunately, here's what you have to worry about. It's rumors push stocks, news people sell. So once they actually, the day they release the new vehicles, they're like, hey, look how cool this looks. And you're like, yeah, we're going to crush it that day. It probably won't happen. There'll probably be a sell-off. You remember with the merger news that pushed the stock up to like $60. And then as soon as they announced the merger was complete, it pushed the stock down to $28, to $22, to $18, to like $17. So yeah, it's a momentum play. Keep your eye on it. You'll see when outflows greater. You'll see when there are walls put up and your stock's going down and the walls keep moving. When there's a short at play that pushed ride down and pushed um, workhorse down, you saw those companies, even though you're like, workhorse has to be worth this much money. It wasn't. The shorts push it down. It's easy to manipulate stocks. When I tell you there's light volume in the market, I tell you I can manipulate stocks with four to five million. Now imagine these hedge funds, these institutions have 16, 17 million. They're going to crush it. Next question. Let's go on. Kill it. Spy dip this week. Um, not until you know otherwise. Again, I think markets are going to be strong tomorrow. If I do think there's going to be a dip, I think it's going to follow the pattern. So two green, one red. So I would say today and tomorrow, green. Wednesday, red. Follows the pattern. Thursday, Friday, green. So overall, it should be a green week in the market. Again, patterns can change. Hello, 349ers question. When you actually splits on that, what should be the expected if a call expires on? To, okay, so whatever you have, call or put. Let's just talk about your strike price. $5 or $4, right? It doesn't matter. They're doing a 10 for one reverse split. So let's say the stock, the ETF is $3.98. You multiply it by 10. So that price, when you wake up the next morning, will be $39.76, okay? Your call option, which you paid, let's say it's a $4 strike price call. You multiply it by 10. So your one contract will have a new strike price of $40. 10 times whatever it is. If you're in it, four and a half dollar, 
put or call, multiply it by 10. Four and a half dollars becomes $45. $5 strike, put or call becomes $50, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It does not change the number of contracts. If you have one contract, it does not become 10. If you have 10 contracts, it doesn't become one. If you have five contracts, it's still five contracts. The only thing that changes is the ETF price and the strike price. And again, just multiply it by 10. It's real easy. Your platforms will do it for you. Um, and you might end up selling before that. If UBXY goes down to like, where would be my exit price? If it goes down to like $3.80 tomorrow, because because the markets are crazy good, I would execute all of my puts. I would sell them all because $3.80 for me would be cheap. I think $3.80, $3.83, something like that is right around the juicy area to sell my position and get out because I only want to be in it so long. When it rebounds and goes 10 for one reverse, it goes back to $37 or whatever it is. Yeah, then I'll get I'll get started again. We can watch it go down another 10% every day. All right, next question, please. Okay, where do I see Bitcoin going? Um, I haven't changed my prediction. It's 120,000 all day long by the end of the year. So again, supply and demand hasn't changed. People are going to talk about the energy that it uses, but 82% of Bitcoin has already been mined. Okay, we all understand what mining is. Um, it's been solved it's out there in the public only 18 percent are left so what controls the price of bitcoin or gold or oil or any commodity because that's what bitcoin is it's a commodity it's supply and demand okay so the more times people want something when bitcoin becomes popular again and people realize oh man that thirty thousand, yes it hit thirty thousand was the bottom um i have a follower i got it at thirty thousand he made 20 percent on it thirty six thousand i told him it was going to go even higher it's now what thirty eight thousand again i don't know let's look at uh i use gemini for that and i checked all my crypto i was actually in something called sand and whereas every other crypto made 20 percent back sand made me like two percent back it sucks uh let's see what it has right now so uh bitcoin right now is thirty nine thousand. yeah so what is it going to do it's not going to explode on you if you like Bitcoin, it's not going from 39,000 to 48,000. Remember, I used to predict that shit and I was right. I'm like, Bitcoin's going to jump 20% next week. And it goes and it went from like 50 to 60. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so crazy. Yeah, when we started out, that's how it was. But Bitcoin's not jumping. Why? Because now there are Bitcoin options. There are crypto options. There are major billions of dollars bet on the things to keep them within a certain range. Now, 30,000 was too low. But right now, it is where it is. However, supply and demand. As more demand comes from these cryptos and it will come for crypto. People are going to take it. They're going to put it in their crypto wallet, their e-wallet and just hide it away. That's their investment. Dogecoin, right? Up to 35 cents. It was at 25 cents. So right there, you're making 40% if you get in. So it's about scalping. I like to scalp crypto now. If you see something drop and you think it's ridiculous and it's off 25%, then you buy. When it goes up 15, 20%, you sell. You don't need to hold. We're all about making profit. All right, next question, please. Hmm. coin and carnival entry point for tomorrow if you miss your chance today okay so let's do hypothetical okay it's always great to make a guess when it comes to anything so if you wanted carnival for tomorrow let's just pull it up right now it's up three percent today or a little less um chart looks damn good i would wait for a dip if it's going to dip is when as low as 26.90 today and it finished around 28 dollars. so it finished around the high if i was going to put in a price i'd probably put in like $27 and maybe like 50 cents, 27.50. I saw a huge bid and ask today around that price. It stayed there, 27.53, it fluctuated right there. So you're looking for a dip. If you don't get in your stock, 27.53. Um, if you're looking at options, whatever the end price was today, you wanna put in a bid 15 or 20% under the entry. So again, for that option, if you, whatever option you pick, September calls at $30. Whatever it closed at today, you want to put in 20% below that for tomorrow. So close at $4, 20% under $4 is $3.20. Okay, uh, coin, you missed entry point. I don't know, coin's dangerous. So again, I expect it to run hard, but there was massive selling today, even though it went up like half a percent today. If you look, the volume was, so there must have been so many bag holders that got rid of coin. Now, what does that mean? It's a good sign because I can't afford coin. You can't afford coin. Institutions can afford coin. And that's why I think it's going pretty good place, especially if Bitcoin and other things they're saying coin is the crypto play. Um, let me just see what it looks like right here. 10 million, the average volume was there. They actually have earnings. 
Did you know Coin has earnings? Yes, so it's not BS anymore, actually. I'm actually liking Coin more and more. Okay, so what's the entry? So your entry is right here. I mean, this stock was up as high as, what, 3%, 4% today? It was as low as, it was only off a dollar today, which is like not even a percent. So you want to get in right where it is. So if you're going to buy a stock, I would buy it right now. If you're going to buy a stock in Carnival, I would wait until it goes to 2750 or 2753. If you're going to buy options, remember, just plan ahead. Save 20% from whatever it is. Anything you guys saw, any option you're looking at, look at it. If it's $5, go, okay, I'm going to save 20%. I'm going to pay $420. If it's $4, save 20%. You're going to pay $320. If it's $3, save 20%. Pay $240. Okay? So on, so forth. $2, you'll pay $160. Next question, please. I keep fooling around. Opening a quarter. Runs. Okay, good job, dude. If you are on so much fire, and I don't know if it's the alerts or whatever, you're picking your own stocks, you're just seeing volume. If every play that you're making goes up as soon as you buy it, then congratulations, man. It doesn't always run like this. You're not always going to be as hot as this is. So just remember to follow the rules. There will be times to support your stock. So say your stock ran up. You bought it at $8. It's $10. If it goes down 10%, remember my 10% rule. It's on the platform, okay? Stock goes down 10%. You can support it. Even though it's at $9 and it's still up from when you bought it, you're still supporting your position by buying that. Now, please, everybody, three things, right? Tell a friend about this. Share this. You know I'm transparent. If you've never seen me before, now you understand. I see volume. I see patterns. I have a platform. $3.49 a week. I don't care if you join one week, five weeks, 10 weeks. I'm a lifer, okay? I'm in this for life. A lot of gurus lately, I made this uh, announcement on Saturday, are leaving their people, their followers, people with 15, 21,000. One guy says, I'm writing a book. I'm doing this. I just don't have time for you guys anymore. Guess what? My platform members are, were like a fraction of that. And when I send out a tweet and you guys like it, it's hundreds of responses or 100 responses. This dude used to get 60, he used to have 15,000 followers. So he was not into it. He had no emotion. I love my family members. 349 training for life. Tell a friend. When I tweet it out, please share the tweet. It's quitting time. I'm going to see you all tomorrow. I will come out with a morning video for everybody to show you guys what I'm seeing. And let's just watch it. All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys.